Hello everybody, a uh, different video than usual. I won't be appearing in this video in person, although you get to hear my voice. So, hey, good for you guys. So, this is a video about Australia and the current debacle about gay marriage, whether to legalise it or to not legalise it, and with the postal vote, or at least the referendum that they're trying to do to determine whether or not they should legalise it or not. Now, for the no side, they claim that, amongst other things, the usual things that we hear, the fact that it should be a man and a woman based on religious reasons, the fact that biologically that is the normal family unit, and that they are also worried that their freedom of speech would be infringed upon if this law were to be go into effect. Now, we'll get into that in a little while because that's the reason why bearing a friend of mine who has come under fire for recently and I will give you my opinion on that later but to the S vote now the S vote believe that it is now 2017 it is the 21st century it's current year it's current century we should be beyond marriage being just between the man and the woman because you know what, what does it actually matter what your gender is you should be able to marry whoever you want there are legal benefits there are economic benefits to being married because especially if one person was to die it'd be a lot easier for this person to bequeath whatever they want to bequeath to their widow slash widower plus they get benefits as well if australia does indeed have state sanctioned benefits for married couples also in their mind it's unfair that one group of people in society should have this right over another group. Even though civil partnerships are a thing in Australia, and I do believe most of the no camp are in favour of such things, they think it should be marriage because then it's full legal equality. But of course then, on the extremes of both sides, the extremist no voters don't want that to happen because basically they feel that it's a blasphemy, it's degenerate, and on the yes side, where their extremists are, they're going to call these people homophobes, and that these people are horrible and bigoted, and as we've seen in Bering's video, some people have been fired for wanting to vote no. Let's get into that. So, let's look at the proposed bill. Now, this is from 2016, so it might be out of date. As far as I'm aware, this is the draft that they proposed, and I'm going to go with this one. So this is what it has to say in regards to the no vote and their worries about having to be forced to potentially have to do things they don't want to do. Section 47. Ministers of religion may refuse to solemnise marriages, or refusing to solemnise a marriage despite this part. 1. A minister of religion may refuse to solemnise a marriage despite anything in this part. In particular, nothing in this part prevents a minister of religion from a making it a condition of solemnising a marriage that a1 notice of the intended marriage is given to the minister earlier than this act requires or two additional requirements to those provided by this act are complied with and b refusing to solemnise the marriage if the condition is not observed refusing to solemnise a marriage on the basis of religious beliefs etc three a minister of religion may refuse to solemnise a marriage despite anything in this part if any of the following applies a the refusal conforms to the doctrines tenets or beliefs of the religion of the minister's religious body or religious organisation. B. If the refusal is necessary to avoid injury to religious susceptibilities of adherents of that religion. C. The minister's religious beliefs do not allow the minister to solemnise the marriage. Grounds for re refusal not limited by this section. 4. This section does not limit the grounds on which a minister of religion may refuse to solemnise a marriage. And in 47A and 47B it further outlines more grounds for refusal that's not limited by this section. And in regards to the military, it's basically the same. They just replace certain language with more neutral language. So, as you can see, there's really nothing that is to be worried about, really. I mean, they're taking into account all the different beliefs and opinions, and they're trying to really please everybody. And I think this is probably the way to go about it. It's best not to force these people through law to do it. Rather, in a way, let the free market decide because it's not just gay people who are going to refuse to use the services of these religious institutions who refuse to marry them because straight couples can just refuse to go there on the basis that they're considered homophobic so eventually if they have any sense of business acumen they have to relent or they suffer with having the economic burden that other institutions won't be getting because they will basically be marrying anybody and will just basically be okay as a result of that. Similar to what we did 10 years ago and decades before that with religion, we just basically forced them to change their ways, not by the law, but through our actions and through debate 
and things like that and I don't see how anybody can really have a problem with this and in the bill there's really nothing that even mentions free speech they're letting people decide whether to solemnize or to give consent to marriage or not based on religious beliefs or secular beliefs it's up to you to decide it's basically the same as the current one they're just amending it to include gay people considering the free speech concerns let's get into that shall we now you see australia doesn't really have a protected free speech law it hasn't got a first amendment with the exception of political speech which is protected by common law and they have implied freedom of speech like for example in 1996 someone called albert langer was imprisoned for basically telling people to spoil their ballot or to fill it out in a way that was invalid and he was imprisoned for that and of course that's wrong because he has the right to do that under free speech and thus it was amended to include that and we see countless examples of the government limiting free speech of people when they speak out on certain subjects but there's nothing to stop the government from doing that because again Australia doesn't have explicit freedom of speech in any constitutional or statutory declaration of rights as it says here I know it's on Wikipedia but it's a very good summary really this law is being attacked for proposed freedom of speech violations or potential freedom of speech violations when the problem is staring at them right in the face it's not gay marriage that's the issue here it's their own laws Bering is wrong on this issue I mean I don't think he's a homophobe because he said right at the beginning of the video contradicting himself that he's all in favor of them having equal rights but he has to vote no because of free speech well if you want to sort out free speech in Australia why don't you go and tackle the laws that actually govern that because they don't protect you whatsoever unless it's political speech. You maybe want to revise the discrimination acts, racial and sexual and stuff like that, to perhaps mitigate those issues or to get rid of them entirely. This bill doesn't harm anybody's free speech. It just doesn't. It's a complete opposite. In fact, it, it's not even relevant free speech to this debate. Now, there are people being attacked and people being fired over this, you know, I mean, Tony Abbott got headbutted for his beliefs and that's wrong and it should be punished. That person should have been arrested for that. And I think the woman that Bering mentioned in his video should, if there are grounds for it, take her former employer to a tribunal, sue them. I don't know whether or not she can do that, but if possible, she should. I don't think going to the press and making a big deal out of it is going to sort that out. I mean, if you want to highlight an issue of thought crimes and people believing in that sort of thing and hiring based on thought, go ahead. But here's the thing, that employer seems like the type of person who would fire and hire based on what they think anyway. So even if she didn't believe in no, she could have been fired over anything else. You just don't know. That's just the type of person that employer was and they should be punished for potentially discriminating against somebody and firing them for unfair means. But again, I don't know how Australian law works in that situation so you know that's up to the Australians to decide but anyway this is just a quick video no the gay marriage law or amendment as it really is does not affect Australian free speech the laws governing freedom of speech are the ones that are destroying it for Australia and the fact that the government pretty much has a free reign to do whatever they want with it because it's not explicit anyway until next time it's been your boy I'll see you later Thank you.